Welcome back to Sunday Live, and we're hosting in studio tonight the Cabinet Secretary for Water and Irrigation, Eugene Wamalwa. It's a critical issue. Thank you for making time to be with Thank us. You. Looking at the data in terms of financial allocations to uh, the sector, we're seeing that they've increased sixfold since 2004. And uh, from development partners, uh, they've quadrupled since 2006, 2007. So certainly, the sector is regarded as important. Yes. But what have we achieved, please? I, I think so far we have, uh, first of all, uh, returned more focus on uh, irrigation, which was not there before. Because uh, irrigation had been lumped up with agriculture, and uh, it was a side dish kind of. But now, with the introduction of the new ministry, there is real focus on irrigation and water. Uh, what we're seeing is that uh, since independence we haven't had uh, a policy on irrigation. We are, and this is one of the top priorities uh, in my ministry, developing this policy which we want to have in place immediately. We also are developing an irrigation bill mm -hmm. that uh, we are bringing before parliament. But what really spurred growth in this sector was uh, the reforms in the water sector, starting from uh, 1999 when we came up with the, our national water policy, and uh, which gave birth to the 202 uh, Water Act. Mm -hmm. This is what really brought about reforms in the water sector, and we had uh, uh, our donors, our development partners, uh, uh, growing in confidence in terms of putting in more money. What we're getting was just about $4 billion at that time. But looking at the current budget, we are looking at almost $40 billion so uh, being allocated. So let me pose this question. I do know that in terms of streamlining the policy and the, and the Water Act of 2002 to the Constitution of 2010, yes. there's still some work to align those uh, being done. And with, uh, you know, there's still a lot of work in progress. But what Kenyans want to know is what has been achieved in terms of access, for instance, to Correct. water. Correct. Um, we'll come to the Galana project, the Kulala yes, Galana project and yes. irrigation in just a moment. But let's just start with coverage and quality of, of water that's getting to the people. Yes, I, I think, uh, f first of all, we must look at the legal, the policy and institutional framework. Because this is now what has uh, uh, reorganized the sector. This is what has uh, brought in more resources because the sector is better organized mm -hmm. and uh, you have uh, uh, boards in the regions uh, working to ensure uh, access uh, to water by all Kenyans. So better management of this vital resource has uh, actually uh, attracted more funding. So uh, as we speak, we have the water bill that will now align the water sector to the new constitutional dispensation. It's going through the third reading in the National Assembly, mm -hmm. and we must thank uh, Honorable uh, Amina, the chair, and the committee. They worked very hard to uh, get this bill in place. But we also tonight, Julie, must appeal to the Senate that this bill is so critical, the bill is before the Senate. It's so critical in aligning the sector to the, uh, to the new constitution, and we hope the senators will prioritize it. Once we have it in place, we have the irrigation bill in place and the policy, we will be able to now roll out completely. We had uh, quite a number of dams that... Uh, I'm coming to that, yes, and we'll yes. just come to that in just a moment. Yes. But for, first, yes. I want to talk about the woman who walks half a day yes. to access water. We've done stories here on Citizen about uh, people who face battling crocodiles Correct. Correct. on a daily Correct. basis. Correct. I have met in Turkana a woman walking and she says to me, this is my second day walking, Correct. searching for water. I spend my days looking for water. So for a moment, as we set aside the policy and legal issues, in terms of access, access yes. to quality water, what is happening? Is there movement? And if not, yes. why not? Really, there's movement. And uh, what I can assure you is that as a ministry, as a government, we really appreciate the role media is playing. I watched uh, the death wells of Turkana. Right. And I think you showed Turkana women spending hours and days going deep in the wells mm -hmm. just to fetch five liters a jerry can of water, mm -hmm. and some uh, fall and die in the wells. And what we want to assure them is that help is on the way. Through the reforms that we have brought, 
through the new constitution under article 43 now the right to water no longer depends on the generosity of the national government mm -hmm. or the county government it is a constitutional right so that every Kenyan has Kenya a right to, to water. water and not just water a safe clean drinking water in adequate quantities. How are you working with, I'm sorry, how are you working with county governments to ensure that you are making a difference at the grassroots? We, we, we're partnering with county government because uh, under the new uh, uh, constitutional dispensation, water services are devolved. The county government is responsible for water services, but the water resources, actually the water resource remains a national resource. And uh, when you hear of uh, counties fighting over water, you can see uh, there's a bit of a problem between Nairobi and Moranga over the northern collector mm -hmm. tunnel. And in Dakaini, I was pleading yesterday that uh, the Moranga leadership should allow and support the northern mm -hmm. collector tunnel to increase the water in, uh, in Dakaini, uh, because Dakaini is what supplies Nairobi. But we have a deficit here of almost 200,000 uh, cubic meters. Through the Northern Collector Tunnel, we can supply enough water to Nairobi. We'll never have the water shortage we've right. been having. Mm -hmm. But equally, the people of Moranga have a right to the water. They can't give all the water to Nairobi and remain without water. So these are some of the issues we are Some of the serious planning at. issues. Yes, that, and uh, inter-county issues are there. But we want to assure them that uh, the national government will partner with the county governments with our development partners to increase access and that's why we're doing more dams we are trying to uh, increase access not just uh, from the dams alone at the coast i was there about uh, three weeks ago and i told them the story of israel how water insecure israel was mm -hmm. but now israel from a water scarce country is a water surplus country exporting water to palestine to jordan and it's through desalination Years ago, they were looking at uh, just the Sea of Galilee, which is a very limited resource. But then they said, wait a minute, this is not enough for us. They turned to the Mediterranean coast. They have a coastline that is not as long as the Kenyan one. You know, from uh, Kiunga to Vanga, we have a long coastline. So we can and the Indian Ocean. We, we, through technology, we can, do it. we can also do it. We can have more water with desalination, just remove the chumvi and you have clean water. That's so we, we're looking at options, Julie, to increase uh, access to water for all Kenyans in all regions. In Turkana, we have the underground, I mean, we have the groundwater. We keep talking the about it. Over there, we, keep we have talk discovered huge quantities of water. When in do the we ground. leverage the What we're looking asset? at is that some are, uh, uh, actually, what we have done, the drilling has shown that some water is safe, Mm -hmm. some other water because of the salinity we still need to address those issues so we will be having a meeting with the with the with the governor Nanok we already had a meeting with members of parliament and we want to see how we can harness this groundwater and deal with the water problem in Turkana once and for all let me let me ask this and we're coming to the the issue of the dams yes. and we've been talking about Israel's example uh, of food security yes. and, and uh, innovation in Correct. terms of water for too long. Mm -hmm. We need to be talking about our turnaround. And, I, and I almost Correct. feel like asking, is it because the elites or those that are in positions of power don't suffer the, the lack of access, that it doesn't seem to be moving fast enough? And on that note, let's come to the, the dams, the projects around the dams. And um, the, the government described it as a robust water uh, storage program, Martha Bates, Kitui, yes. Baringo, Machakos, and Kajiadu counties were the targeted counties. How is that going? Uh, we had about five mega dams. Uh, we had uh, Badasa in Marsabit County. We had uh, Uma Dam in Kitui. We had uh, Chimsus Dam in uh, Baringo. We have Maruba Dam mm -hmm. and uh, Kisarian Dam here in Kajiado. Uh, Kisarian is doing well. Uh, Chemsus uh, is uh, one area we need to complete so that the people access the water. But uh, we had a problem with uh, Badasa and uh, Uma because of legal issues. We are in the process of unlocking this stalemate so that the people of Ukambani can get the water, mm -hmm. the people of Masabit can get the water. So we believe these five dams are actually going to increase uh, the water capacity and access for many Kenyans. And apart from these, we have other dams that we are doing at the cost. We have Mwache Dam that we are developing. Mm -hmm. In Nakuru recently, we had Itare Dam 
in partnership uh, with the Italian government and we want to thank the president uh, who just came back from Italy and uh, had invited uh, the Italian prime minister here that uh, Itare is actually on the way that's being developed. We also have in uh, Makueni, Tuake Dam, this is one dam that is going to also increase uh, access and uh, we believe if we successfully implement and add these dams we will have increased uh, water storage, we will increase water access for many Kenyans. Do we have enough of a sense of urgency? Yes, there is a sense of urgency, but there are all sorts of challenges mm -hmm. because you have a good idea, you have investors coming in. We're encouraging PPPs in this uh, particular area, but there would be some challenges, like in the Northern Collector Tunnel also, we have a legal case challenging uh, the development, but that stands in the way of uh, the Kenyans' right to get to access the water. We're doing the best, and I can tell you, uh, when I came to this ministry, uh, there are a lot of friends who asked, I mean, you're a lawyer, you're not an engineer, mm -hmm. what, what business do you have with the water? But uh, there are issues that, uh, with my legal background, uh, I, I, I am able to resolve, and I'm hoping we will be able to resolve them. We're engaging with the lawyers, dealing with the matters. We're emphasizing, in partnership with the county government, the importance mm -hmm. of completion. Because we have El Nino coming and we had most of these dams yes. ready. El Nino itself will just fill up the dams. In fact, so going to El Nino, and we still yes. need to talk Galana Kulalu, so I'm going to rush yes. things along a little bit. El Nino yes. is coming. We're seeing the impact of El Nino internationally yes. and, and the scale. Uh, we need to prepare ourselves. So first and foremost, I hope the county government, governments are working yes. um, to ensure that their people are ready for El Nino. But Correct. it's the huge question of the benefits. Yes, yes. We, see, we see the, the challenges that it brings but how do we ensure that we really leverage this water once it hits us uh, for our benefit yeah it, it goes back to the legal framework that we talked about uh, the new water bill mm -hmm. which will become uh, the new water act after the Senate and the president uh, assents to uh, what has been passed has uh, uh, the new legal framework that provides for institutions that will be in charge of uh, water harvesting mm -hmm. and water storage. All important. This is vital because we must increase our storage capacity. We get rain, but this rain runs off to the ocean. So let me ask you, uh, Eugene, yes. will we be ready for the water harvesting come El Nino this year? Uh, I, I want to thank the Deputy President. Uh, the other day we had a, a cabinet uh, committee meeting and we got all the players together. We told them, we know when it rains, there will be floods in Budalangi, mm -hmm. there will be mm -hmm. floods in Kano Plains, in Ahero, uh, there will be landslides in Moranga and other areas. What are we doing? And we are partnering as national government with the county governments. We are with Governor Gashagwa from Nyeri representing all the governors, mm -hmm. and we've asked the county governments to prepare. Come up with we've a also, plan. Yes, with a plan. We've also asked the relevant ministries, including uh, the, uh, my ministry of water and irrigation. We have the education ministry because schools will be affected. We have the transport uh, and infrastructure ministry because roads will be washed away. Absolutely. We have, uh, uh, of course, uh, canals that we have uh, put in place in irrigation. We have dikes in Budalangi and other areas. So we are all preparing together. And we want to assure Kenyans that uh, we as a government are preparing. We have a plan. We know it's no longer a rumor, but it has been confirmed that El Nino is coming. But we don't want Kenyans to panic because both the national and county governments are working together to okay. ensure that we mitigate uh, the adverse effects of El Nino, Thank but you. also that we take advantage of it to harvest. Uh, in, in areas like uh, Okambani where it's dry, we want to partner with the county governments to ensure that we have seed, we have fertilizer for the farmers. When the rains come, they can be able to plant the, the after El Nino effect. The, the proof will be in the yes. eating, and my, maybe the question will be if we fail. Yes. Where does the buck stop with all these partners? It's very easy to point fingers and say, hey, we were liaising with the ministry. No, it was the county government that failed. If we fail, who do yes. Kenyans hold accountable? I can tell you, Julie, that the new constitution is very, very clear. That apart from giving the rights to every Kenyan, wherever they may live, mm -hmm. Whether uh, they live on Megingo Island uh, or uh, they live in uh, Liboy, mm -hmm. Kenyans are entitled. It's their right to access water and food. 
But also the same constitution under Article 21 makes it very clear that it is the fundamental duty of the state yes. to ensure the fulfillment of these rights. We have one state, we have one head of state, and it is the so duty of the national government. You've, you've ju you just and dodged the why, bullet and said no, 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 the no, I'm, I'm not dodging it. I'm not dodging but, it. Yes. I'm saying as national government, yes. we must take... That is why you the deputy the president, yes. when the president was, uh, was away in Italy, called all of us. Uh, uh, as part of national government, uh, the key arms that uh, mm -hmm. will uh, uh, play a vital role in dealing with the Lino, we're all together. Then we also uh, had county governments come in. So we must work together, together. to ensure that to Kenyans have food, Kenyans have water. I'm going to move yes. you forward now to the food issue and, and uh, food security. We must wind up, but we've got to talk Galana Kulalu and what's happening there. Five years one million plus acres was the plan yes. and food security the objective as well as the creation of correct, jobs correct. where are we i think we've made progress in galana the other day i was very pleased when i hosted uh, my israeli counterpart mm -hmm. and we went to galana we had 500 acres ready for harvesting we launched successfully the harvesting we had uh, not just the maize we also had the unga mm -hmm. Apart from the unga, we also had the ugali, and uh, Julia can you tell ate, you, you, I tested you it, I'm and uh, ugali is the <laughs> <laughs> We, and all, the we ugali. all love ugali. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but the ugali from Galana Special. was first class. Okay. And all I can assure Kenyans is that what we're demonstrating as government is that uh, it can be done. In Galana, years ago, if uh -huh. you are told you can grow maize, you wouldn't believe it. Right. You know, we just had shrubs. It's a dry place, but... Through irrigation, through uh, uh, partnership with the Israeli government and Green Arava Company, we were able to import this technology from Israel. And we have 500 acres ready. So all, all we were doing, we were test driving. This was a proof of concept. Yes, this this was it, a it was a test drive. What it's a next? pilot. What next? Now, the next, are we thing, on track? the next yes. thing is that once we have shown that the 500 acres can work, mm -hmm. we are now going to do the entire 10,000, which is a model farm. Once we do that, we're opening up the area for private sector to come in. And what we're saying as government, we are not going to do the business of uh, uh, growing maize or uh, milling. We want private sector to come in. Mm -hmm. Ours is to facilitate. Thank you. And uh, once we do that, we are going to open up the place. All we'll do is facilitate, provide the necessary infrastructure, then the rest will be done by private sector. And we're not just looking at Galana, because in Galana, we're looking at about half a million acres mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. We are also uh, developing other areas. Mm -hmm. There's a huge... Uh, potential in Turkana, in Pokot, right, right. Uh, Takwell area, and uh, we're doing something in Weiwei. Apart from that, uh, in Ukambani, uh, when we develop Twake Dam, there's a huge potential there for irrigation. So all these areas put together, uh, in, in Budalangi, yeah. uh, we have huge potential. What we're doing in uh, the Bunyala irrigation scheme is very limited but we can expand it to 40,000 or so acres, grow more rice. What we're doing in Mwea also, in partnership with the Japanese government, right. we are uh, expanding the Mwea irrigation scheme, putting uh, modern technology there, expanding by over 15,000 acres. We can grow enough rice. <laughs> to bridge the deficit that we there. can grow enough right yes. we, we, we don't have the, to import we see the opportunity and the challenges with you my yes. time was up about eight minutes ago That's so right. we need That's to right. wind up i'm yes. going to ask you one question yes. and yes or no answer yes. very simple um have you finished with politics or will your political life continue yes or no <laughs> I'm not finished with politics, You're but I'm not doing no. politics now. I'm serving Kenyans, uh -huh. and I want to thank the president and the deputy president for giving me this opportunity to serve. But you will be serve. back in the political sphere. Definitely. But what I can tell you, Julie, mm -hmm. is that uh, we have an opportunity through irrigation to make Kenya food secure, to make Kenya water secure, and there can be no greater dignity for mm -hmm. a parent than that dignity of being able to feed all your children. Likewise and for the nation, and for feeding all your citizens, there is dignity in it. And through irrigation, we can do it. And, and, and for and now, that's, for that's now where that's my focus, focus is. Thank but you. in 2017, we'll be back. Thank you we'll for joining politics. us. He's, he's a, a lawyer and a politician, and therefore he, he, has, he has said basically there's no better 
achievement. It's the dignity that you uh, you, you you get when you are able to feed your nation. That's Correct. what you have said. Correct. And with his docket, he's saying he will do it. The challenge is on his shoulders. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll have you back in again to go through more detail. We're coming back to your comments. Don't go away. Stay with Sunday Night.